all systems active. Launch sequence activated. Five. Four. Three. listening to Beyond the Verse, a Star Citizen podcast. A show dedicated to Cloud Imperium games, Star Citizen and Squadron 42. Whether you fight, explore, unite, and or trade, we bring you news, updates, interviews, reviews, and analysis. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a pour of Radagast, and join us as we go Beyond the Verse. Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of Beyond the Verse, Star Citizen Podcast. I'm your host, Solus, and we did it. We have made it to episode 50, our gold anniversary episode, uh, and I can't, I, I don't really even know where to start with the sentiment and all of that, but I have an hour and a half to two hours to get into it with you. I'm looking forward to it. Well, welcome back to the show, my good friend from episode one. Conniff. How you doing, sir? Thank you. I'm doing well. Good. I, I don't know how to follow up any of that. Um, never do, <laughs> frankly, but <laughs> well, at this point, you yeah. know, it's, I'm like the, when you started this podcast, I was the master and you were but the learner and, <laughs> and that's not even true because <laughs> by that point you had just completely inundated yourself with star citizen yeah. lingo and everything. Yeah. So I feel like I am the casual, just um, along for the ride sort. Of, like I'm Pippin sure. and you're Gandalf, and I'm like, where Ooh. are we going? <laughs> you know, Good pull. I, I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> well, you humble me. Uh, obviously, you humble me. And 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 guys, if you haven't listened to episode one, go back to episode one. Basically, it's our origin story. We go all the way back to Elder Scrolls Online and all the way up to to now. So I don't necessarily want to rehash that. But Con, if you've paved the way, uh, and you've been along for the ride this entire time, all 50 episodes. Now you did take a hiatus though. I got to call you out on that. <laughs> you, <laughs> you did take a break from Star Citizen, like every other backer. But can uh, you blame me nope. for 319 and whatever it was, <laughs> 318? Not at Something. all. Not, not at all. So before uh, before we get into any of this, like I would love to catch up with you real quick. So before you jumped into our org nights and really became uh, a beloved member of Soul Provision, <laughs> where, where have you been? What have you been doing? Well, I took myself, not just a hiatus from Star Citizen, but I took a hiatus from any sort of content creation, uh, really just focusing on my real life, which is job, Good. family, kids. Yeah. Uh, and over the, you know, the course of however long that was, a few months, you end up getting the bug and you're like, yeah, I've got a lot of <laughs> wasted thoughts up in here. Yes. <laughs> they need to somehow come out of this and enter the mic and then go out on the internet for all the history of time to judge and <laughs> whatever. And so yeah. uh, myself and my dear friend Shiloh, we came up with a podcast called Questing the Multiverse, which is uh, our sort of end-all be-all on podcasting for us, where we can pivot between various different uh, games or ips even so like right yeah. now we're doing episodes i'm reading and he's listening to the audiobook uh fellowship of the ring oh yeah and so we're doing a bit of a book club if you will oh, about cool. that yeah but when we started the podcast that was Baldur's gate three season and so as you are probably aware that game oh, yeah. was massive and still is and uh so we started the show talking about that and then Starfield and something. So eventually, the pendulum is swinging 
well, back and forth is what pendulums do, but let's let's <laughs> take the one that goes, you know, like in a circle and all sure. around and every which way. Eventually, yeah. that pendulum will swing the direction of Star Citizen. Yeah. And then we will, and then these roles will be reversed, and you will join myself <laughs> and Shiloh. To, you bet. And we'll just let you talk the whole time because you have all the information. Uh, <laughs> in fact, I felt real odd today, and listener, you might enjoy this, but like again, I have I was the one that paved. I'm the reason you are here. One hundred percent. I can't really take the credit for that. He's done all the work, but I'm the one that got him into the game. And so yeah. when he first started, he would ask me all these questions, just day in and day out. 7 a.m. Hey, I know by you. the way, <laughs> yeah. um, if I get this ship yeah. and I take it to Daymar, am I able to do this, 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 this? And I barely knew, but I knew enough to give you the answer. Yep. And so even just today, before, as we were prepping for the show, I was asking you yeah. those type of basic questions. And I, and I always think that's fascinating because it's like, you know, it's not just wasted knowledge um, especially for a game like this that is pioneering so much in oh, yeah. the video game industry. Uh, you're learning things that are basically state-of-the-art features for yeah. video games. So yeah. anyway, the roles have reversed. You are the <laughs> the master. <laughs> and, and, you know, I will say credit to your community because there's people in there that know way beyond you as well. Yes. And it's, that's always probably humbling. But Yep. And, and like a good... Like a good leader, I elevated them to officership in our org. So I'm like, you know what? I don't know crap about mining. So hey, Mechit, guess what? Guess what you're doing? <laughs> hey, I suck at aerial combat. Hey, Groza, guess what you're doing? Um, you know, like a good leader. I don't pretend like I know know anything. But it, but it has been. It's been 50 episodes, 52 weeks. It's been an entire year of really just diving into one game. I, I've taken maybe a couple of days off, and you alluded to this but you always go back to your constant and that star citizen, no other games doing it. Mm -hmm. And it's annoying, Conniff. Like, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, dude, it's annoying. Cause I'll get into Baldur's Gate and I'm like, man, it'd be really cool if I could just go wherever I wanted to go. Have you always oh, yeah. been this way? I, that, that's my question for you is, yeah. as far as video games go, yeah. because I've noticed this a lot, you know, with your community members, a lot of them, they'll play like Helldivers 2 is, is really big right now. Yep. Uh, at the time of this episode yeah. being live and did do you find yourself constantly like not single-minded always sounds so like <laughs> negative Insulting, but yeah. you know what i mean like yeah, is I that you. have you always been like i want to pour my energy into a singular experience no. or have you maybe fluctuated over time and become now as life you're you're super busy in real life no um do is do you find it now that you're like a singular minded focus singular drive or have you ever <laughs> gone yeah. the wide the qu the quantity over quality? I guess. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a brilliant uh, it's a brilliant question. Um, I've I've purposefully segregated my creative outlet and my gaming outlet. So if I okay. if I'm gonna create content, I go both feed into that one that one product. If you remember like the Natural Ones D and D, Elder Scrolls yep. Online, Natural Ones D and D, New World, it was just that's all I focused on. There was nothing else I touched from a creative aspect. But then if I just, I don't know, Tuesday night my brother and I wanted to jump in a game and play, I would go into payday, right? Yep. I would go into Halo two or some nonsense, right? Just to like eat up time. So that's I think it's I don't know, it's kind of an answer of both. Um, if I'm going to create something, I'm going to go all in because I think the listener deserves that. And like, if I'm going to say I am I am the fastest growing podcast for Star Citizen, I need to back that up, right? I need to be able to provide something yeah. other than just, hey, there's this really awesome moment where I flew into a, I flew the 890 jump in a, <laughs> into, oh no, Carrick. I, I don't, Lon Darden the Carrick, Carrick into And I planet. think we told this up, that story in episode one, so. <laughs> it's, it's always worth telling again. But it again. did happen. It, it did. And uh, I don't let him forget it, so. <laughs> I deserve, I deserve it. I deserve it. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm brand new to the game. This is maybe another side of that story, but I'm brand new to the game and I got cocky. I got very cocky and was like, you know what? There's a super hornet. There's these like small agile ships. No, I'm going to fly the freaking Carrick. For the oh, yeah. So you're like, <laughs> why, why not learn on a school bus? You that's know, right. <laughs> I'm going to learn how to drive driving a semi. That's, that's, yep. that's basically what you did. <laughs> yep. And uh, gravity, gravity was not kind uh, that fateful night. So... <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah, Conniff, um, I'm blessed to have you on. Just kind of wrap up the introduction here. Blessed to have you on full circle 49 episodes ago. Um, man, we haven't really looked, we haven't really looked back. I mean, it's been nonstop. We had, I think we have a total, uh, and I can pull up the list specifically, but we have a total of like nine guests uh, to include CIG's Galactica, just nonstop producing and great, phenomenal conversations wonderful relationships and I think this is a good segue into like our first introduction my dear friend star jump grim sent me a voicemail and I just want to play that to get us started uh, it means so much to me it's e emails mean so much to me the messages on on Spotify's Q&A means so much to me uh, but taking time out of your day to produce you know like an audio um uh, greeting is is pretty special. So I'm just gonna play this real quick. I'm humbled. I'm honored to be able to play this. This is Star Jump Grim. Hey everybody, this is Star Jump Grim, and wanted to send a big congratulations uh, on the 50th episode of Beyond the Verse podcast. Really, really cool. As someone who's done a little bit of podcasting myself in the past, hitting 50 episodes is quite an achievement. So well done, and um, you know, just want to say thank you for continuing to bring positivity and, and goodwill to the star citizen community uh which is something you've been doing since the beginning so um you've got a fan of me thanks have a great show love it love it yeah and this is not going to be an hour and a half of like praise solace praise beyond the verse <laughs> Uh, I won't let that happen, it's, don't you worry. No, <laughs> you, you'll humble me very quickly. Um, uh, I was going to say, Star Jump yeah. Grim sounds like he does podcasts. So. Yes, he does. Yeah. Now, he's, he doesn't have your you know voice, but, <laughs> but close to it. Um, few, no, few mortals do. <laughs> few so. more, that's right. <laughs> Just kidding. Maybe I need the humble pie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Star Jump runs uh, you know, the hangar link and the Star Jump fleet viewer, and I had him on for episode 28. Um, I... I'm not going to waste my time and say, go see his content. You've already seen it. Uh, you can't, <laughs> you can't be a star citizen fan and not know, you know, the content that they produce, but man, that's, that's humbling. Um, and I will say, this is a really good start to the rest of the show is like the whole positivity And me and Khan have talked about this on episode one. There's kind of two schools of thought here. You can hate on it and still create content for it, which makes no sense to me, or you can accept it for what it is and watch and be a, a, a student in the craft of creating a video game and, and see the positive light in it. But I think what Star Jump is also referencing is the ability to positively in, impact the community. And the community is something very special in Star Citizen, which is why I'm basing most of my shows off of the community. I mean, we, we've got amazing characters, amazing leaders. Um, that just permeate throughout everything. Um, you can go onto social media and you'll see the little buzzkills, right? But for the most part, <laughs> you're gonna see some very awesome content creators that are still producing content even after 318. That was a huge stab in everyone's back. Um, <laughs> people are still recovering from, from 318. Um, so Star Jump, thank you so much. Um, but kind of coming back to like the Star Citizen, I guess, community and socials, What's the temperament that you've seen? Again, you took a hiatus a little bit. You came back. Is the community generally more positive? Or are they less positive than you remember it being? I would say going into when I first started playing, it was the same because things worked, right? Like you could jump <laughs> in the game. You could play with your friends. That's a low bar. <laughs> well, but there's a piece to this I'm going to get at yeah. that is, I think, a big reason why I would say there's a net positive uh, change now. Mm. Um, going into the game, like, you know, what was it? Three, the bad time was 318, 318. right? Like the dark times, oh, yeah. the, mid, the dark ages of When Star I decided Citizen. to start, yeah, awesome. Exactly. So 317 <laughs> was the very end of, you know, the old era. Yeah. And I say the old era as, uh, again, an extreme casual to the game, so correct me on all the the logistics but the old era being the persistent entity streaming didn't exist and so i mentioned to this to you in our private messages but yeah i because i was reminiscing and when i started if i 30k'd while mining or bounty hunting or anything like it was that was it i wasted that time 
you know, especially back the way I used to do it, which was get the cutty black, go to uh, <laughs> the landing station uh, or some some place on a planet, yeah. uh, load up the rock onto the cutty black. You had to really wedge that thing in there perfectly. <laughs> go fly around, you know, looking for mining nodes or rocks or whatever they're called and land and pull it out and and this loop would take you two hours for maybe 200k but i enjoyed yeah. it you know like it's not efficient as far as money is concerned <laughs> but then that 30k would happen yeah and all of that loot all of that progress just gone and there are time you know that would happen to you and you'd just be like yeah i i don't want to play for the next day and a half or something yeah. just because it's like you want games to respect your time yes and the games that do that exceptionally well are the games that especially as an adult you're gonna you know you're gonna sink more time into yeah and so that was the old era and then 318 came and made things worse <laughs> and then i think 319 was what like a slight continuation of that when did the per persistent persistent yeah. entity streaming when did that come so, that was, you know? so that was so that was 318 and then 319 was like a crutch, right? It was like a crutch that was like, okay. let's just let's just get across the finish line. <laughs> so let me rephrase that. When yeah. did they fix it? <laughs> well, like what 320. Was, it was okay. like 320, yeah, when it was so th good go. <laughs> Yeah, and that was about halfway through Beyond the Versus uh, yeah. life or, yeah. so far, your first year. Okay, so yeah, that's, for me, that's the era shift. Is that old era to now this, to now... Uh, you know, looking ahead, or rather ahead from that moment, you know, to today, if we, when we log in for your org night, yeah, I think I, I've joined at least half of them, yeah, and there's only been like two or three 30ks that entire time, and and sometimes it doesn't even take all the people. Like we had a 30k last uh, last org night, yeah, and I was fine. Um, I was stuck in Jumptown Bunker by myself, but that's you know, <laughs> it's not scary, you know. <laughs> yeah, not scary at all. <laughs> uh, you've seen how I play these games. I come like ready to take out an army. So it's good when fourteen of your buddies just to, you just go away, and you're like, uh, well, I hope, hope nobody shows up here. I'm stranded. I had a squad. Uh, so anyway, looking back, you know, that's what I see, and I see a community that was, and community being the greater Star Citizen player base. Yeah. That was particularly salty and and I would say toxic about the state of the game. And yeah. you've touched on it in episodes of you know a few times. Like it was kind of deserved. Yeah. Obviously, never like from a completely deranged lunatic <laughs> perspective of you know death threats and that type of stuff. But sure. like just the the strong criticisms and and maybe some of the angry criticisms from people who have spent real real money on it yeah uh you know they not that they earned it but like it was understandable yeah and so now you look at it and again like org nights i show up i'm able to play the whole time i could continue playing i yeah. don't get kicked the whole group of 15 plus people are there able to group up you see everybody's name i mean occasionally you get those bugs <laughs> where one or two people's name plates don't show up but sure. Overall, this is a much more functioning game than it was at the start of Beyond the Verse. So, yeah. to your credit, you really, I mean, you built this thing, this this podcast, at probably the hardest time to do so. Uh, and that's impressive in its own right, but to maybe not get your yeah. ego too high, you know, <laughs> you do have a lot of great yeah. community folks yes. that have helped you along the way so 100 percent. yeah yeah no uh i don't know it's a blessing and a curse um there were nights like probably once every 10 episodes there were nights that i'd sit down with the wife and i'm like i i don't know what i'm doing like like there's no one's happy in this game like no one's happy um the first few members that joined soul provision like didn't ever play. <laughs> I'm not yeah. gonna. I'm gonna name them. You know them. I'm not gonna name oh, them. Yeah, but yeah. The, you know they well, joined. I, mean, I was one of them. Like I was there. Yeah. I you know I yeah. played the. You know a little bit. But yeah. Like I was here and I was just like, ah, yeah. sorry, Solus. Like 100. There's other games coming out. You know. So yeah. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. And, and again, like you said, deservedly. I, I think no one from CIG would would, would sit there and be like, 
my feelings are hurt. How dare you? How dare you get mad at our project? Um, I bet you they didn't want to play it at times, no. too, because they're like, oh, this labor yeah. of little lowercase love. That's right. Point, so. That's right. Yeah, it's been fun to listen to, like, Jared Huckabee uh, on, like, Inside Star Citizen, Star Citizen Live. He even says 318 was, like, the dark the dark times, it's, the dark it's past. It's the dark ages of that game. <laughs> hey, quickly, while we're on this, um, a little bit of education, if you're like a first time listener, if you're a recent listener to be on the verse, just quickly, what Conniff was mentioning are the four pillars of technology. And we're gonna get into it because there are some other questions asked by the community that I just wanna go ahead and get like the short Reader's Digest version out on the pillars. So quickly, um, OCS, the object container streaming. I'm doing all this from memory, so somebody hold me accountable. Well, it's not going to be me. So. <laughs> yeah. Connor, tell me where I'm wrong. There. <laughs> uh, it'll be in the comments section. Like, hey, idiot. Mm. Like, um, OCS, uh, object container streaming, it takes a material item and makes it into a serial number. So it's not taking up memory whenever you log out. So any sort of item, box, ship, your body, it all gets serialized. And so when you log out, it doesn't take up space on the memory. OCS, that was done several, several, several patches ago. All right, so next we have persistent entity streaming, which is what Conniff is mentioning. It's the idea that that OCS, the serialization, everything persists on your individual shard, your instance, right? So your server, your instance. So if you die, and this is what you were talking about, like org night a couple of nights ago, half of us would be canceled. <laughs> We'd log back in like, oh, I'm still in my eclipse. You know, mm -hmm. you know, people were still in their ships. Like that is the persistent entity streaming at work um, because that shard kept everything active. And so when you log back in, you're there. Awesome. Um, the next piece of tech, I'm gonna say 2.5. It's not really considered like a pillar, but replication layer. So the replication layer is happening right now as we're speaking. It's being tested in the Avocati, um, but the replication layer is this idea that when the shard goes down, like if, a, if the server crashes, the replication layer that's happening simultaneously is going to keep everything running until that shard gets back online. So it's this idea, the 30Ks will never happen again right? That'll never be a thing, won't ever drop. You might pause, right? Um, and I think the latest test was like two minutes. You're paused for two minutes, and then after two minutes, all right, everything's back to normal. But that's the replication layer at full capacity, right? It's basically freezing that moment in time for things to catch back up, and then it goes live again. So that's like 2.5. Third pillar, server meshing, that's happening simultaneously right now. It's, it is kind of what it what it sounds like. It's this idea of being able to hop between shards, right? So let's talk um, the Pyro server and the Stanton server, two separate servers happening at the same time, but they're being meshed. They're, they're existing, they're coexisting. Even though they're separate, they're coexisting. So a jump between Stanton and Pyro, seamless, simultaneous, good to go. The last pillar is dynamic server meshing. It's this idea of having infinite amount of people on a server. Right, it's basically making everything all in one big happy family, and the shards being individual. Like, I am my own shard, <laughs> so I might be replicated into another shard as I get closer to another person. So nothing ever drops, nothing ever gets lost, and it's across. Again, I say infinite number of players. There's probably a number out there that's finite, uh, but there you go. <laughs> There's the tech, and so one of the first questions that the community asked me deals with the tech. Uh, but I think that's some good context um, getting into the rest of this conversation. I don't know. I just I just threw up a lot of words together, kind of. A lot of word salad, <laughs> as they say. Uh, the, I think the key takeaway, though, is like a lot of people might look at this and say, MMOs have been doing this, right? Like, you know, yes. servers or uh, currently if you play World of Warcraft or Elder Scrolls Online or Guild Wars 2, you join a server, but like you're really playing with people across all different types of servers. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the biggest difference is the scale at which this is happening too. Right. Uh, Star Citizen is a huge game. You know, the from point to point is massive. Yes. Uh, and not just that, but then you get into like all the individual things. So persistent entity streaming isn't just your player. Yeah. It's also these items that you put on your ship. So. Um, yeah. Shoe Swapper, which is one of our friends, but he's yeah. the one that got me into the game. He was showing me once on his, uh, what's the creepy alien salvaging ship? Reclaimer? Redeemer? Yes. Yeah, the word. Yeah, that was Reclaimer. Reclaimer. <clears throat> yeah. 
he had all this like food on the the galley in his ship and he's like yeah i just put that there like a week ago and it's still here <laughs> and that is where That's it blows cool. my mind because yeah. th- i don't think i've seen that in in a multiplayer game if you drop items in a multiplayer game those items will eventually despawn yeah. for sure uh, i i can't think of a single game where that doesn't happen yeah and uh, unless those items are like uh, what's the, uh, tied to you, bound to you, right? Mm. So where like you drop it, but nobody else is gonna see it. Yeah, maybe those items will stay. Well, yeah. that's not the case here. Like you're talking, anyone could have gone into Shoe Swapper's reclaimer and seen his entire Display, yeah. cabinetry of uh, <laughs> whatever pulse. What's the surge? What's the drink you guys all like? Cruise and. It, and, and yeah, cruise, and yeah. all of them are still there for anybody that goes, in. and that I think is a key difference here. Yeah, well, and in every you said point to point, it's very long, right? But yeah, the space in between the points is habitable. So if you go from like Art Corp to Microtech and you stop your quantum drive or quantum travel halfway through, you can exist in that space. And you are literally in an infinite amount yes. of space. Like, and that's crazy. So you you start introducing ships and we'll get onto the questions. I, I feel like <laughs> me and you are gonna talk forever. This is gonna be a five hour podcast. Um, May as well be 50 hours for 50 episodes. I, I can call in. <laughs> no, I can't. We've got some fires tomorrow at work. So sorry. Yeah, I, I just died inside when you said 50 hours. I'm like, no, I love you to death, but no. Um, but like the Odyssey, right? So everybody's talking about this Odyssey. It's like Carrot 2.0, but the Odyssey, you can basically refine your own fuel and be out in space forever. You never have to like leave the Odyssey. That's That right there is like, that's the sexy yeah. part about what we're talking about. You can literally stop your quantum travel in the middle of a quantum tra- uh, a, a quantum leap and just exist. You and an org of 20, 25 people can just exist in your odyssey and no one's gonna find you. No no one's gonna like stop at the infinite um, you know second that you did, um, which also yeah. caused a problem during the Idris event because um, that's how they were escaping everybody during the Idris event, but I digress. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, that's that's the uh, the excellence of the tech at work. And actually, let's get into some of these questions. At the end of episode 49 and really throughout socials this past week, uh, I wanted to make this episode kind of more about like you and what you wanted to talk about. And this is the community. Because um, again, I wanted to celebrate and answer questions and me and Conniff kind of go back and forth on some of these topics. So we're going to first go to the Spotify Q&A. And this first one is from Dakota Riley. Quote, what has been your favorite moment in this first year of doing Beyond the Verse? And do you have any goals that you want to achieve in year two? Uh, that sounds like a very Amazon question. <laughs> what are your <laughs> it's goals? It's a question that you have to answer because <laughs> you're, the, you're the one in charge. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess speaking on, for myself, speaking on behalf yeah. of the listener, because like many of you, I am just a listener. I might be here. <laughs> but ultimately, like Solus is running the show, and um, my experience with Beyond the Verse is as a community member. And I can easily say the org nights are my favorite moments, and I'm sure many of your favorite moments as well. Yeah, and it's because that's what that's what this game was always about. That's why Solus fell in love with this game to begin with. Yes, is is those moments whether it's arena commander and we're all fighting for that last knife kill to win <laughs> gun game or gunfight or whatever it's called. Yeah. Or if it was, uh, what we did a few weeks ago where we just went to jump point to jump point in the org 890 jump. Yeah. And, uh, you know, those are the moments that this game is, is really built for. So yeah. that's my, yeah. And, um, uh, 100% agreed. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, so I, I I I relate I relate them both as the same. So the Beyond the Verse podcast and the Soul Provision organization, they are the same thing to me. One doesn't really exist without the other, um, and it's the community that we have built. And I say we not as a billboard or some weird sentimental drama like oh hey, he recognized us. It literally is. Uh, a, a joint effort. I didn't create it on my own, right? Word of mouth, people listen to the podcast, they wanted to be part of something that was big and growing. We went from, and kind of can attest because he's been there from day one, uh, we went from like five org members 
to what a month ago hitting over a hundred in discord. Yeah. I mean, just crazy growth, but that community, it is live and it is thriving. You can go onto that discord and there's, I mean, every channel is popping from our, our bourbon conversations <laughs> to, mm -hmm. to a, a channel dedicated on mining exploration. Um, I mean, role playing, like there's the community is, is, is alive regardless of how annoyed people are at some of the aspects of the game. We'll talk about it here on beyond the verse, but there's a place for us to go to, um, and just, I'm gonna say shoot the shit. It's a very awesome, um, very awesome community, and it's because of you, the listener, and those of you in Soul Provision. So, I'm in full agreement with Conniff. Let's do uh, let's do question number two from a, uh, from a Kel K E L L. Well, Dakota did ask you, what, do you have a goal you want to achieve? Damn it! In YouTube? <laughs> I'm not. Uh, that's it. why I'm here. That's why I'm here. I got uh, you, Dakota. Yeah, the Amazon, <laughs> the Amazon answer. Uh, when I set OP two goals for Beyond the Verse, I'm kidding. Um, you know, you know, what's funny. I set out, um, a year ago, I set out a year ago just for the love of creating content, right? The passion of making a podcast. I didn't have a single goal in mind. If I had 10 listeners, I would be happy. Well, we're close to hitting 18,000 listens on podcast. And that, that number is within a year outstanding to me. Um, it's hard for me to put this like second year goal. I mean, it'd, it'd be easy for me to say, well, let's double everything. Let's do the same growth we did last year, you know, to this year. I don't know if that fits my brand. I don't think it's, it's the number of people tuning in or the amount of impressions. I communicate that because I celebrate the community and what you've accomplished. But for me, I think the goal is like, I, the goals are in game. I want sole provision to fill an entire, I don't know, Idris <laughs> <laughs> or 890 jump or something more realistic and fly in a pyro together for the first time. Hey, or we're going to get into pyro for the first time together. <clears throat> let's, let's jump in the elegance of the void, the name of the 890 jump and let's go. Yeah. I think those are my goals is the end game, the memories that will last, um, it's not so much about the numbers. Um, I would love to have more CIG developers on. Um, but like even then, uh, there's Inside Star Citizen and Star Citizen Live where we get plenty of dev uh, feedback and conversation. So I'm gonna go back to my original answer. I want us to be a part of base building 4.0 when Star uh, when Squadron 42 comes out, I want us to be thriving in that as a community. Um, so I think that's, I don't know, that's my long-winded answer to a very, <laughs> very challenging question. <laughs> Does that make sense? I don't know. That, yeah, no, okay. it makes sense. And I would, uh, I would agree. <laughs> Again, I, I'm just this like, <laughs> like, I don't know, adjunct, <laughs> whatever. Um, and so I, I can't speak to your goals, right? Sure. But yeah. I can definitely feel energized by the focus being the community yes. leading the way and re that's really what you've kind of said is you want you know the community to be able to engage in base building all yeah. of us to because you can't just base build by yourself and that's not what you would mm -hmm. want to yeah no. so yeah because that'd be Starfield <laughs> it would be Starfield wouldn't it <laughs> and you know what more power to Starfield. Yeah, let's give them some love. Yay, Starfield. <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> That's about as much as uh, they're going to get from me. All right, <laughs> next next question. Uh, Kel, how did you first hear about Star Citizen? Was it? I don't need to read the rest. Um, was it through, <laughs> Was it through Chris Roberts' original games or question mark? Also, love how far you've come in your podcasting journey. Love it. Um, yeah. So let, let's go backwards. Um, Yes, we've come all one <laughs> back in the day. Um, how far I've come in my podcasting journey? Hey, thanks for recognizing that. Um, there has been a lot of maturity. I've been podcasting for I think seven years now, but this fifty episode by myself, and, and I say that like structure wise, creating it by myself, um, I've matured a lot in my standard work my procedures, what I focus on, how I talk about things. So I'm glad that that is recognized. That's one of my internal goals. Um, 
So I'm glad you noticed that. So thanks, thanks so much, Kel. As far as how I first heard about this, go back to episode one. Phenomenal conversation between me and Kana. If you're looking at him, you're listening to him. It's his <laughs> fault. Um, it is. Maybe Reader's Digest version. Maybe a short, a short little recap. Um, we were in between games. New World flopped. It was a uh, a really bad launch. And so the Lore Seekers, the team I was a part of before, kind of went you know a different direction with a Star Wars kind of RP theme. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, you know, just trying to find another game to, you know, to land on. Uh, and Conniff posted a single photo. There's just one single photo that he posted in our um, kind of social discord at that at that time. And I, I asked, I asked the very stupid question. Hey, Conniff, what, what game is that? What is that? And you want to know what that photo probably was, listener, because he <laughs> won't tell you this. But I guarantee you it was a Drake Cutlass Black Stop. flying outside Stop. of a uh, space station somewhere. <laughs> I mean. So let that just sink in for a moment. And that's more for the community members that know. <laughs> well, I don't know. Have you? Are you very uh, against Drake all over no, your podcast? No, no. Well, yes and no. Yes and no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on. Maybe, maybe a little. You know, uh, no. uh, I mean, so that's what that photo was. I think. I funny. don't. I don't remember. But I actually don't. I actually don't remember either. I would not be able to tell you which photo it was, but that would not surprise me because um, I knew. I knew like the cutlass was your was your thing. Well, um, and it looks slightly like the Razor Crest yes. from behind. Yes. And Mandalorian was big back whenever that was. Yeah, that's I mean, fair. It still is, but you know. Yeah, no, that's, that's so. absolutely fair. Um, yeah, just quickly to address the hate on on Drake. <laughs> the, uh, the Drake in the room. Yeah. Is it in the room with us? Yes, <laughs> so let's now address it. You know, it's funny. I have a pen here from Star Citizen uh, of a Drake Cutlass. I don't know if you can see yeah. that. So. I do. And do you have a mm. 890 jump pin? Nope. Hmm. Stop it. <laughs> I was I, I went to look at the camera like Jim does in the office, and I just went looked the wrong direction. So nice. Whatever. <laughs> oh, who invited you on this uh, on this podcast? Um, so uh, so Drake. So here's the deal, right? Here's the deal. When I uh, when I think space, I think like futuristic. You know, it's 2954. This is 900 and what, 30 years in the future. So 930 years in the future, I'm thinking like origin. There's some like LED lights. I mean, come on, like most Honda Civics nowadays have like LED lighting inside the interior. So like, I've got this like idea of future is luxury is origin. So all things origin. So I fell in love, 890 jump, 400i. You love the 400i too. So don't, don't talk I shit, kind of. <laughs> and the only ship I fly is what? An origin oh, 350 M50. M50. <laughs> or, yeah, 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 M50. <laughs> so I, I'm just the pot calling the kettle black in this situation, <laughs> yeah. but I do have a cutlass black, and I yes, that's my one of my faves. So, yeah, um, yeah. So, I mean, long story short, either other vendors or manufacturers that I prefer, however, I drive a, a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon in real life, which is basically a Drake, like taking it apart and <laughs> holding it together with duct tape. So, I don't know. Take that information with what you will. Um, <laughs> but yes, this is also the same guy who flies an M50 to jump town. Mm -hmm. What Absolutely are you doing? Do. What are you doing at jump town with a 350 or with an I, M50? I don't know. I get there fast. You if do? I need to leave, I can leave fast. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it I is have so problems, funny. I guess. Um, I to answer Kel's question for myself. Yeah. I, I so I got solace into the game. Um, I am responsible for his supreme space commander tier or whatever. There you go. At. I'm not um, even going to say it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but we talked, we mentioned him shoe swapper is the one that got me into the game and it much, it was, it was a similar experience because I showed you, you know, you saw that photo and then you started messaging me about the game Yeah. and I believe I then showed you uh dig that's video. That was yes. a very good comprehensive look at what is star citizen. Yes. Well, there's one day I was at work, and this is obviously during COVID when everybody's working from home. And so he's in Discord, Shoe Swapper is, and he is like, hey, do you want to see Star Citizen? I'm like, no idea what that is. Sure. And I watched him stream and basically go from Hab in New Babbage. That's the Microtech mm -hmm. place, right? It is. Hab in New Babbage. And you, if you've played this game, you know what I'm about to say. 
all the way to the term uh, the terminal the the <laughs> the rail the grail car the yeah. tram all the way to the spaceport get in his ship go fly pick up a rock and then go out on microtech and look for mining rocks and and it being one continuous thing zero load screens was mind-blowing to yeah. me and so i was like i need to try this game out and <laughs> the rest is history and here we are march 13th and here we are 2024 yeah. however many thousands of dollars that were were into the game that's crazy man <laughs> that's crazy i i i I don't know. I think there's a lot to go into with what you just said as far as like the tech there um, and no load screens and all that other sexy conversations. If if you haven't already, go to Star Citizen's YouTube channel and watch the video called watch this standby. I'm pulling it up now. Do, 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 it's called that's copyright. <laughs> it's, that. Thanks, man. Uh, <laughs> there was three notes. We're yeah. good. <laughs> The Future of Gaming Star Engine. The Future of Gaming Star Engine on Star Citizen's channel. It's what they showed at CitizenCon. It's what um, Dr. Disrespect watched and reacted to. Osmond Gold watched and reacted to. The whole thing. It's like 15 minutes of the entire future of the game without a yep. single load screen. So do that <laughs> with what you will. Do you uh, ever watch those and you and you're in your mind you're like, there has to be loading, right? Like, there's always been loading in every game yeah. I've ever played. So how are they hiding it? Like, yeah. we think we think elevators, you know? Like, in, in a normal game, you load in, you go into an elevator. Yeah. 30 seconds later, you're in a different place. And you're like, sure. loading. Yeah. Yeah. But the, but the problem with that in Star Citizen is you'll be at your docking station, right? Yeah. I will be in the space station buying a double decker hot dog because I have <laughs> problems. You'll walk, you'll see my nameplate move, move and you know, walk past the ship terminals. Cause I don't fly <laughs> go to wherever you're docked and yeah. you'll see my nameplate zip across the area. And that is the elevator traveling like the it TARDIS is. through space. Cause that's how that works, yeah. but it's all real time. So it's, it, yeah. it's fascinating to me that they're not really loading. No. anything like you're going from your your hangar to the spaceport or yeah that uh the monorail yeah it's just it's all live yeah yeah it's the same it's the same argument about like quantum travel um when you go from art corp to microtech that time that you're quantum traveling is a quote-unquote load screen no it's not i can get up from my ship i can walk throughout my entire ship i can yeah. move inventory around i can have an entire game loop for this 60 million kilometers or whatever it is um, that it takes. So I, it's not a load screen. I'm still, yeah. I'm still able to play. Yeah. So that's crazy. I don't it know. Is. And we did it in the 890 jump for we that did. org night. Um, you know, specifically it was jump point to jump point. Yeah. But people were getting crazy on the, you know, stab and stat. Yeah. Gr Groza. Groza. was g stabbing people in the neck. Uh, <laughs> and that's all while the ship is, moving at light speed that's right. across the game world so that's right yep and everybody wants to talk about the idris event and how bad it was but what we're talking about was emulated right there in the idris event you'd be chasing after an org that's inside of the idris and you you see them physically going from you know quantum travel to quantum travel um mm -hmm. and if you just take a second to think about what that actually means what conif is mentioning uh, it's pretty powerful let's go to the third question we're we're 45 minutes into this, and we're, all, we're only on the third question. We've got time. Only Nothing but time. 49 hours left. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, all right, here we go. Day night. So this is the tech question um, that, that sparked, like, the first 45 minutes of this, of this podcast. So day night <laughs> nine, quote, CIG has made or is making a lot of proprietary tech getting Star Citizen to where it is and where it's going. Do you think CIG will or should lease this tech after completion to other companies for use? Let me let me have you answer that first, Conniff, because I have some insider uh, I have some okay. insider information that will kind of seal this shut. But what do you and, think? And I have outsider information. There you go. <laughs> outsider information <laughs> is my own thoughts. Uh, so one thing, I guess I would have to a ask a question, and that question is, 
do we see that happening in the video game industry? So um, to use the real world as an example, my company uses AWS, right? Mm -hmm. So AWS is is this tech for um, cloud, I really don't know what it is, it just seems really powerful and and it's (laughs) used everywhere. Uh, You might be able to answer that, but AWS is used by probably most of the Fortune 500 companies out there. And this is something that Amazon produced or developed and uh, has rolled out and, you know, leased, if to use Day Knight's word, yeah. to all these other companies. But I don't know that I've ever seen that happen in the game world as much as like a game comes out using certain technology. Uh, take Halo 2. Halo 2 comes out, pioneers console mm-hmm. matchmaking. And then every other game, like that was the beginning for that. And now console matchmaking is for consoles is a just a, a second thought, you know, like it, yeah. it, it just is. Yeah. Um, but I will say, you know, like also in the real world, you have Weta Workshop that did, worked on Lord of the Rings and several other big name films. And they've become kind of a premier props and miniatures and bigatures is the actual term uh <laughs> you know developer developer producer for movies you know blade yeah. runner they they produced for rings of power the first uh 2021 dune i don't know about dune part two sure and then andy circus worked on mocap for the lord of the rings and that completely pioneered mocap now and now video games are using mocap so mm. i don't know if they w- sh- if cig should or or rather, I don't know if they will, but I think that you're going to see companies use that tech uh, or develop their own iteration of it because as, as companies want to build these bigger and bigger games, think like something like Blizzard or Microsoft now, you know, if they want to build a game that's uh, the next World of Warcraft, like you're not going to be able to build it in the old server realm that we used to use. Like, that you know and meta so facebook they they had the metaverse or whatever they call their whole thing yeah that's what we're looking at here is yeah. is tech that it will eventually i think usher in a meta a metaverse virtual reality universe type video game situation so sure that's my very, very <laughs> uneducated answer. Why don't we get an actual no, that's, answer? No, that's very educated. It's just, <laughs> just sort of like a logical look at it. Like, I think they should. Yeah. I don't know what that looks like because I don't know that we've seen it yeah. like this before, as far as I can recall. Yeah, and, and I, I agree with your sentiment 100%. And this is before the insider information, but I... I <laughs> Yes, I think they should. I, I, I think they should because here's what's going to happen um, to the gaming industry. It's going to happen the same way it's happened to you and me as the gamer. There are other games that are going to launch and fall flat just because it's not Star Citizen. Like imagine Harry Potter, Star Wars, Star Trek, these massive IPs, Lord of the Rings, these massive IPs. What you mean? You mean I can't just exist in that world? They're gonna have it. There's a gamer base that's gonna be very upset that they can't live in Hogwarts Castle, and have their own room and decorate their own room and like live, you know, with other people, 400 people, regardless of server. Right? There's gonna be a lot of people that want that tech, and I think ga- the gaming industry will never be the same. And I'm not trying to talk in in superfluous verbiage. You know, I'm not not trying to be that guy. But once this game launches and they prove the concept. I don't know how games go back, like the Halo 2 matchmaking that you referenced. I think that's a great reference. So so there's that. There's the insider piece. So <laughs> at CitizenCon 2953, at the VIP after party, um, my brother actually has more specific answers because he he's uh-huh. the one that had the conversation um, with the developer. And I'm not going to say which developer's name. I, it's not my story to tell. Um, and I don't want to misquote. But the short answer is no. They're not going to lease it out. There's so much nuance. There's so much uh, that they built for the sole uniqueness of yeah. Star Citizen that it wouldn't translate. It can't translate in another game. Like the serialization, we talked about OCS, PES, like all of that is dependent on this core like Star Citizen universe, 
in anything that's not Star Citizen Universe, it's not going to be able to translate. So the answer is yes. yes. Yes, they should. But no, they won't for this time being. Yeah. yeah. It's like if you were to build a car that could only be driven by an elephant. Right? As ridiculous as that sounds. Where are you going with this? <laughs> well, listen, like if a car that is built for an elephant, like you can't, a human can't drive that. Sure. And so if, if you it. see that and you're like, well, I want to drive a car and the elephant's like, well, here you go. You know, yeah. you can't drive that car because it's built so specifically to that elephant and that specific context and usage that you it's just not possible <laughs> much in the so I, I told this. you this this makes sense you just got to follow I, along with it I'm, I'm um, here I'm here for it let's go <clears throat> much in the same way based on what you're saying CIG is developing something that's so specific to their use case yeah. that to lease it out may not be possible now I think still that you're going to see the tech be replicated and, I agree. and more companies are going to build it and uh yeah. and maybe cig finds a way to lease out like a part of it like a proprietary part of it that yeah. they can put their stamp on like yep we pioneered this i agree who knows yeah but as far as the way we're going to see it used the elephant <laughs> it's going to be impossible for the the mouse or the human or whatever to then use that same tech because it, it just doesn't fit outside of star citizen I love everything about this analogy. I make it's, wild analogies all the time. But it makes so sense. Dude, it makes sense. This might not be the last <laughs> one for this episode. <laughs> let's go. Let's get crazier as the night progresses. Um, yep. I'm not even drinking, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll buy, it, it might make more sense. Uh, I'm on my third uh, my third <laughs> glass, so it might make more sense here in, I don't know, fourth or fifth glass. Well, <laughs> so. By the 40... 42nd hour of this episode he'll be asleep i'll still be here so i'll just read something i've got plenty of books you know well anyway having night way off topic every <laughs> nightmare is about elephants driving um yeah all right here we go question question four uh from nick do you have something you want to see in game or be worked on sooner or later beside the stuff that is announced for 323 so let me just read this one more time do you have something you want to see in game or be worked on sooner yeah, I mean, I'll just go quickly. Um, I I want to see base building. It's not coming in. It's not coming in three twenty three, but for me and sole provision, game over. Once there's base building yeah. and we can exist on some random moon. I mean, guys, can you can you? <laughs> all right, you're gonna get me role playing here in a second. Can you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine having like your I think it's like eight eight kilometer by eight kilometer is the largest plot of land i think um it comes with the pioneer anyways um okay. you have you have your plot of land and you've got an 890 jump set up with a kraken with a bonnie merchant man and you're running like what you would see in the mandalorian or some star wars ip like you're living and existing in your own created space surrounded by a community that you have built together base building yeah. for me is it like that is i don't care about pyro or having ten thousand freaking systems give me base building done uh, i mean it's org campuses is what you're looking yeah. at in this situation you're getting yep. these whole compounds of buildings and you know each end each person's got an individual existence there and yeah and i think that's fascinating because i don't think any mmos have done that at the same level no uh, guild wars 2 does have like a bit of a like they have guild halls yeah um but like all the other ones that i'm thinking of they don't really have the same concept especially not in which you can just see a plot of land and be like you know what <laughs> i like that mountain on microtech i want to build on the other side of it yeah and then every single person in your org can do that and then because of persistent entity streaming it's going to be there, and then when you're sleeping, someone in Australia in the org is like, yeah, I'm going to go work on this at the same time. Like, it's all live. So yeah. 
that's fascinating. My short answer for this is because um, I didn't put anything in the notes, but <laughs> I would like to see alien mm. life forms. Yeah, I don't know when that's coming. I don't know if it's coming. I, you know, whatever. Uh, but what really kind of triggers that is those missions where you go fly to a random wrecked ship somewhere, and maybe it's a yeah. uh, caterpillar. Yeah. And you're supposed to find a specific thing or loot or something and then, you know, whatever. It would be wild to get to that caterpillar on the dark side of this planet and every single person who's played Star Citizen knows that when you land and it's just, it's dead silent and you just hear the the world and your character breathing and stuff, like, yeah, it's, it's eerie. It's horrific. And then to all of a sudden hear, like, the sound of some beast that's oh. hiding away in this caterpillar oh. that would be <laughs> so fun to experience I think yeah especially if it's random like you don't know if you're gonna get that because right now oh. you can get pirates I think in you some can. of these yeah uh, but I would like to see some wild death claw sort of beast that just yeah. roams around or was maybe being transported for uh, some crazy guy in pyro you know and crash landed on uh one of the asteroids of grim hex yeah that's probably <laughs> not accurate but whatever yeah i think that would be fun just seeing alien entities roaming around or just creatures you know just creatures in general yeah there's been <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> there's been some um some star citizen monthly reports and squadron 42 monthly reports where they talk about uh bringing in like foliage and just life in general plants you know flying flying animals quote unquote um i think making the universe feel more inhabited uh, i think is a great call out kind of um i will say like citizen kind did show space whales right they showed uh, space yep. whales so that'll be that'll be exciting when that happens horrific if i'm <laughs> Me personally, if I'm flying through the clouds of Crusader and I see a freaking space well fly across, <laughs> I'm. Uh, Wouldn't be the first time you ran your ship into yeah. something at high volume. Nope. Uh, like, of course. Velocity. Murphy's Law. Here I am flying into the udders of a space well. <laughs> space well. Um, <laughs> did you say udders? I did. Anyway, let's, let's space wells don't have udders. <laughs> but the reason why I said udders is because they also showed like cows. They showed like alien oh. cows on um, Microtech, I think. Um, so like I think they're working on it, and at the very end of the yeah. Citizen Con video, they showed the Vandal um, coming out of a spaceship. So 100 yes. percent cannot wait for aliens, other species. But then real quick, responding to your comment about uh, being in like a caterpillar, or whatever. I do remember one time, um, my I'm I'm talking to my brother on Discord. My brother's not in game, so I know it wasn't him. But I'm <laughs> on basically a caterpillar. I forgot what it was, but it's a derelict um, spaceship yeah. in the middle of space, right? And I'm trying to find like um, a dossier to like report back. And I heard a ship come out of quantum travel, like right at my spot. And I'm like, and I hear it. I hear it like in my surround sound. Like somebody just arrived. I don't know if it's friendly foe. Like I don't, but like that sinking feeling in my gut. Mm -hmm. I want more of that. I want yeah. more of like, oh shit. <laughs> somebody just jumped in on my location. So yeah, dude. And, I, and that it's a whole well, aside, but like the, there was a PVP debate happening about this game maybe a month or two ago. And you can't, you can't turn PvP off, otherwise you lose those type of moments. So I mean, yes. it has to be always on. I think in my yep, random yeah, you, tangent opinion, you, you don't want to get rid of PvP. Uh, yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, Even though I'm not a big PvPer in games like that, where it's yep. you know a living world type situation, you just it's part of the experience. Yep, wholeheartedly agree. All right, the final question on Spotify's Q and A. We haven't even. Got into the emails yet. Um, yeah, you know. <laughs> um, there's only like three or four on the email questions. But the last question on Spotify, um, this is from Saffron Virtue, a fairly newer member um, of the Soul Provision Org. So blessed to have you. Thank you for joining. Quote, in terms of role play, Conniff, I'm looking at you. In terms of role play, what is the game loop, current or upcoming, you are most excited about and why? Well, uh, I put data running in okay. the notes here, 
But then I got to thinking, and I, I still agree with that because it's not in the game yet, right? And the Mercury Correct. Star Runner is exists for that purpose at some point. Correct. And the Mercury Star Runner is a is a wonderful ship. Yeah, uh, it's probably my favorite ship that I don't own because it it gives the Millennium Falcon yes, <laughs> style vibes. Yes, it does. Um, and so I don't know how that's going to look in a game like this, but Cyberpunk 2077, one of my favorite universes. Yeah. And the whole net running aesthetic and, uh, you know, all that type of stuff with data. Like, I think it could be really fun in here. But then, you know, as I was thinking about it more, I really just like being a crewman, crew mem, crew member on a <laughs> ship. Uh, like when we did the 890 jump org night to the jump towns, uh, not jump town, the jump points, I was role playing as a security officer for the bridge. And That's I right. took it seriously, <laughs> very seriously. <laughs> and, you know, and, and we didn't have anything happen, but like I enjoy that loop. And uh, that's going to be fun. But yeah, so data running as far as stuff that's not currently there. Yeah. Uh, but then there's, isn't there uh, star charting or star fairing or what's the, it's it's on the 600 I maybe. There's like a room for like star charting. Oh, for there's exploration. So ships. Yeah. Yeah. That. yeah so Carrick, uh, well, so, so there that's are the some Carrick. that do, but the star map room or whatever you're talking about, yeah. they also have like the drone operators room in the Carrick as yeah. well. So like, yeah, exploration needs to kick off very quickly. <laughs> um, <laughs> because like, I think that'd be awesome. Like, um, the Carrick, it's going to have to kick off before the Endeavor releases, before the Odyssey releases. These are all exploration ships that kind of yeah. don't have a purpose really purpose. in game. Um, that'd be my brother's answer. My brother wants to see, uh, uh, for those of you listening who might be in Soul Provision, it's D Rock. So D Rock wants yep. all things exploration. He wants to see, um, he wants to see the Carrick and the Odyssey come to fruition, which is 100%. For me, I mean, go figure. My org's called Soul Provision. I want cargo hauling, but I want like, <laughs> I want like the massive, the massive cargo hauling, and I want to role play the shit out of that. I, I want a hull E which that's a god awful ship, but I, I want the whole E capital like transport ship. And I want all turrets manned, all tractor beam turrets manned. I want, you know, the captain's chair and there's gonna be like a food service. And I want to be able to put advertisements on the side of my whole E. <laughs> I wanna be able to, <laughs> right? Like I wanna put Soul Provisions banner or its logo on a couple of the Conaxes or 18 wheeler box i guess it's 32 right. seus i want to be able to decorate the outside of my whole c or whole e like i don't know we're talking about advertising yep. we went to those jump points yeah there's advertisements there what if you could pay a massive amount of uec to you know advertise your org on those like yes. hey welcome to stanton by the way soul <laughs> provision provisions for the soul or whatever your the tagline you know that like that'd be that'd be exciting. Yeah. Uh, but I have to ask, how is what you are after different than the minor sort of cargo yeah. running? Is it just the scale? Is it, it, there it is. is cargo running in the yeah. in the game already. So but. it's it, it's at scale, and I'll be a little transparent um, and maybe vocally critical in this moment but the current delivery i hate everything about the currently the, the current delivery so the one box or maybe even two boxes to deliver from point a to point b i actually like doing those because it gets you around the stand system and it's peaceful yeah it's whatever yeah. it's cool calm collected nights um, and it's fun to do with a buddy right i my brother and yes. i two nights ago went out and did that but it's so insulting when you go up in the the difficulty, it just it goes from like two boxes to six boxes, and so you're spending an hour and a half <laughs> loading uh, loading your ship with like six one SU boxes, and you're taking it to six different locations, and it's just more of the same. It's not complicated. It's not um, it's not a 
uh, a challenge in any way. Cargo gotcha. hauling is like full out operations, like loading the whole sea. You're going to go to an orbital station. You actually have to load onto the wings of the whole sea. You're going to need a security escort because you're going to be delivering to a hostile location. Like the whole yeah. distribution center cargo hauling loop is what I'm more referencing. I, so distribution centers, I want to be able to land <laughs> and then take a shitload of moles um, yeah. M U L E, not M O L E. M U L E, the mules. Um, I want to take like a shitload of those from my C2 and deliver boxes into the distribution center, like basically a full out Amazon operation. I want to be able to, I want to be able to do that. And right yes. now, it's, it's not. It's not. Gotcha. It's not that. Well, and at a sole provision level, you would have an entire crew. You'd have mm -hmm. a pilot, a co pilot bridge security yeah you would have an entire group of four to five you know org members doing the loading and unloading yeah. plus maybe two escort jets yes our ships um yeah. plus ground security for those and so like you're talking like 15 to 20 people already yeah. and that's just one ship if your org is several hundred people and you pick a night and now you're doing that with five different ships like Can you imagine all with the same crew like that yeah that would be sick. so badass and you'd be making so much uh so much credit <laughs> yeah, yeah that's right to spend on nothing at this current moment <laughs> uh, yeah, yes. on more more <laughs> loot <laughs> yeah that that um the jump towns if you haven't listened to the org nights um the bonus episodes listen to any of the jump towns they are fun it's 16 mm -hmm. of us just creatively going at jump town and how we manage it, how we execute it that translated into cargo hauling. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. And that's, yeah, that's kind of like a small scale version of what you're talking about, I guess. Super, super sexy. Let's keep rolling. Let's pull up the emails refresh. I'm going to save Groza's for last. <laughs> absolutely his yeah it's like a lightning round so i'm gonna yeah. i'm gonna save his for last uh let's go to marauder another beloved member uh, of soul provision so here we go marauder good morning congrats again on the one year anniversary of beyond the verse i love being a member of this community thanks for everything you do my question for you in your year of star citizen podcasting you've had regular interaction with other content creators like conif and cig staff how has how has your view of the game and community as a whole changed as you've evolved from the player side to the content creation side? Man. This is entirely for you. I am the least of these as far as content <laughs> creators go, but I'm just happy to be here. But I yeah. this is totally for you, and I think it's a great question for Marauder because you went from just being effectively a fan of the game that wanted to create content about it yeah. to how many times have you given slightly insider information? Like that's not <laughs> just, yeah. you know, that's the evolution. So talk us through that. Yeah. I mean, it's great. It's a great question. Um, damn. Okay. So here we go. Content creators and CIG staff. So from content creators, I've had, um, I've had creators that have created tools like Star Jump Grim, um, uh, Joran, who helped create Bar Citizen, which I'm sure many listeners have experienced. Bar, I've had I've had so many phenomenal content creators on, um, in that standpoint, to um, streamers like Blasphemous, Authentic Young, um, Space Tomato. So that in and of itself is its own story, um, and then. You know, obviously CIG staff. I've had Galactica on, which is 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 CIG social media manager. So my breadth of guests have been amazing, and I've been able to see a wide range of passion and unique and different passions for this project, and it's helped keep me grounded. I think it's very easy for me to go through three eighteen and get kind of huffy, like ah, I've I've lost another, you know hundreds of thousands of UEC on this, you know, lost mission. <laughs> like you mentioned, kind of at the beginning with mining. Yeah. Um, and then see, you know, some content creators that are more toxic, 
than I've seen Grand Theft Auto <laughs> content uh, creators. Um, and it's easy to get wrapped up in that and get mad and you know never play it again. Um, but I've kept myself around people that have done more than just play the game. And I think that has been the difference maker for me is I surround myself with people who have impacted, positively impacted the community. And so what I've seen to directly answer this question, uh, how has it evolved from the player side to the con content creation side? I have gone from uh, a kid at Christmas of seeing a brand new game with Conf, and remember it was like Invictus launch week and it was like the super sexy like holiday <laughs> everything broke yeah but yeah but it was very sexy yes. yeah it was a great time to get lost in in a brand new game so i went from this amazed you know kid at christmas to fast forward to today i'm a very well versed um i would consider myself a subject matter expert when it comes to the tech and, and where cig has come from um, but it's because of the people I've surrounded myself with and who I've chosen to listen to. Um, and just having Galactica on, just, I don't need to shout her out. She, she's, she's, uh, she's very much <clears throat> accredited on her own accord, but she, uh, she was an, she still to this day is an amazing friend of mine who I saw at the Austin bar citizen this past weekend, gave me a hug, you know, saw each other, big smiles on our faces, hug, asked how everybody was going, asked about family. Um, you, it's just amazing to see that the passion that people have for creating actual things, not just streaming, but creating actual things for this game, how it translates into their character and who they are in real life. And so I think, I don't know if that's kind of a convoluted answer to the question, but it's gone from just quick summary it's gone from a kid at christmas loving everything about it through the emotional turmoil of 318 to where i am today where i'm just an utter respect and kind of disbelief where a game has been able to grow in just one year in 50 episodes this game is not the same as it was this time last year do you feel like now more of a steward of that positive interaction than you were now, I would argue that everybody that plays a game is responsible for stewarding the positive sure. interactions that you get. And you're always going to have toxicity. I mean, for yeah. instance, we did Jump Town, and there was that sorry soul that landed at Jump Town, and <laughs> he didn't last more than 10 seconds. Yeah. And we poked fun at him in uh, in the the general chat. Yeah. And not we didn't make fun of him. <laughs> you know, we were like, ha -ha. Yeah. <laughs> soul provision or something. Yeah. Um, and that's always going to be a thing. And, and people will take it even way further in a bad direction. But now that you are at this point to Marauder's question from the kid at Christmas to now a successful content creation endeavor, do you feel like more of... A, a, a ring bearer for <laughs> this sort of positive community driven mentality. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I do. And I feel like, um, so first off it's who I am as a person. So I think, well, what I'm about to say, I don't want it to get lost. Um, but it, it's who I am. I'd rather be positive. I've lived a life that has so much negativity in it. Uh, if I'm going to game, right? Like a kid's game, I'm going to be positive about it. Um, yeah. But I do feel obligated. I feel obligated because there's not a lot of loud voices out there that are positive. The loud voices are the ones that bitch, right? They they yeah. get on and they're, you know, they they uh, have thousands and thousands of followers and hundreds of thousands of views on their YouTubes because they hate the game that they create for. And I don't understand it. Um, so I do, I feel like, like you said, ring bearer, a steward. Um, I'm gonna keep, uh, I'm gonna keep going with what I'm doing. Uh, being yeah. transparent and like vocally, you know, critical about things, of course. CIG is not perfect, um, but man, there's a, there's a right way of doing it, in my opinion, right? Like, I don't know. You don't need to like kill the person on the keyboard um, or behind the computer in order to get your point across. So, I appreciate the questions. The it's a good one. It's I don't I don't see myself as a white knight. I think that term gets f thrown around a lot yeah, oh, as yeah. well. Um, I don't see myself as one uh, at the same time. It's hard even after backing the game for as long as I have, it's hard to not understand why it's taking long. I want them to take as long as they want. Cause at the end of the day, yes. at the end of the day, it's over. And if they produce a half-assed project at the end of the day, it's going to fall flat and it's all for naught. 
So mm-hmm. take your time. We're enjoying it. <laughs> and if you don't believe us, listen to some of the Organites. We are enjoying the shit out of it. So, yep. all right. Love it. So star jump. Grizz, uh, here we go. Let's go. We have two more, two more emails. This is Mustang six. So first off, shout out to Mustang six for creating the soul provision logo. Mm-hmm check out their stuff um i'll put the links into the show notes uh, i think i did for last episode if i didn't i'll definitely do it for this one but mustang six is a phenomenal creator um a brand ambassador he's doing it not only for us but for also tree 0311 um but a couple of other projects as well so go check his stuff out here we go this is kind of a long email but i'm gonna i'm gonna read it regardless hey solace <laughs> We seem to have started this Star Citizen adventure around the same time back in 318. I am so sorry, Mustang. <laughs> and he's still here, so you're still here. Yeah. Thank you, Mustang, for sticking it out. <laughs> that's that's an accolade we uh, that we need to share with you. Um, I watched this game from afar before I started and made the leap of a starter ship. I was trying to start up a side hustle and needed to dedicate spare non-day job time to making art. Then I saw a stream where a newbie was hanging with friends and getting into, quote, shenanigans aboard an 890 jump. I realized then how fun this game would be with friends. While I fumbled around the verse trying to dodge invisible asteroids, good God, yes, (laughs) still an issue, (laughs) and avoid the whatever it was that blew you up right when you left uh, your hangar in those days, I was hooked. I played solo and did a lot of trade grinding, trying to live the life of those high rollers I saw with their massive luxury space yachts. Okay. <laughs> I feel attacked. I bumped in. <laughs> I bumped into. Elegance of the void, perhaps. Yep. I bumped, into, <laughs> I bumped into other vets in games, and that prompted a search where I caught you and Tree0311 talking on his podcast, Armchair Admirals and Generals. You guys were ripping about the immersion and tactics of the FPS play in the game. You were all speaking my language. So I binged on all the Beyond the Verses to get caught up and then decided to join the Soul Provision Org. Your podcast and message go well beyond this game. And with the friends I've made from the BTV podcast and the Soul Provision Org, you are walking the walk of inclusion and community. This is something special and I am proud to be part of it. I really appreciate the time and effort you put into this out here, Mustang Six. Uh, he has another email with the actual questions. <laughs> <laughs> he mentioned that but, in, in the Discord. He was like, oh, I just talked about my thanks for you, and I forgot the question. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he yeah. did. Um, but I do want to respond to that first one. The first, It's, it's such a well-written email. Um, the sentiment is shared, and I think, Con, if you can agree, most of what he said is, is it's so shared. Star Citizen is better with friends. A hundred percent. Playing this by yourself is, is fun. It's it's basically a screenshot simulation um, if you play it by yourself, because that's like <laughs> really all you're getting out of it. But playing with friends is such an incredible experience. And then last thing I'll say, and I'll turn it over to you, Conniff. The, the Tree 0311 interview, um, that that's special to me because it was three of us veterans um, going back to our time in service and relating it to what we would do, how we would use our um, troop leading procedures to get around a bunker mission, a UGF mission, delivery missions, how we would escort convoys. It's a very, very good conversation, again, against, you know, with with us three. Um, but I just wanted to, like, the veteran thing's important. And I don't want to get, like, philosophical or too deep here. But, and this is not unique to Star Citizen, but gaming is an outlet. is an, It's an escape, It is a break from reality, no matter how dark that reality is. And for veterans, unfortunately, a lot of that reality is is PTSD, right? And this, like gaming in general, has helped me through my um, coping with everything that, that I've been through. But Star Citizen takes it to another level. And this is not white knighting. This is not biased. This is like a feel, like, I can't be any more serious when I say this. Star Citizen is different. It is escapism to its ultimate degree, to to the pure definition of escapism. Being able to just 
I'm going to say the Mercury for an example. Being able to log into a Mercury and you're in a planet that you logged out of a couple hours ago or maybe a day before, and you just exist on that planet, you can do whatever the hell you want to do. You're literally existing. And if you want to interact with people, you can. If you don't, stop your quantum travel between two planets and you're not going to see anybody ever. But you're still there and you're escaped. So I just wanted to take a second and recognize Mustang's comment about the veteran piece. I know there's other walks of life that also experience this as well. But Star Citizen is is more than just a game when you look at it through the lens of people needing a break from life. And I think I'll stop there. Conniff, any reactions to that first email? Uh, I would, I mean, I agree with what Mustang is saying with the, it's, it's like if you have a, as a kid, you have a, here's another analogy. <laughs> you have a sandbox. You can have fun playing in that sandbox, yep. but you're always going to have more fun playing in that sandbox if your best friends are yeah. playing in it with you as well. Uh, who knows what you're doing? Maybe you're pretending to be dinosaurs walking around sand dunes <laughs> digging for treasure. I don't know. But but that's the thing about sandboxes is, you know, you yeah. are the master of your experience. And so when you have friends... <laughs> It sounds, man, I had to pause there because I feel like if you're listening to this and you don't have friends, well, first of all, join Soul Provision and 100%. Beyond the Verse Discord, and then you will. But it does sound <laughs> like you need friends to have, what I'm saying is that you need friends to have fun in Star Citizen, and that's not the case, yeah. as we've said. Like, there are fun loops that you can do solo. Like I mentioned, the mining loop. Yeah. Like, that was fun. It wasn't when it didn't work, but now that they, fi you know, fixed that type of, of uh, issue and whatever else, like if I don't want to talk to people and, and everybody that plays games has those moments where you yeah. don't want, you know, you're just trying to just be alone in your head for a bit. Star Citizen has things you can do, yeah, but where that creativity and where the excitement um, really starts to blossom in this game is when you introduce friends. And as yeah. Mustang was saying, like those videos where you watch those newbies, like they've never played Star Citizen before, and all of a sudden they're raiding an 890 jump. Like <laughs> that's inspiring because yeah. you're like, well, I want to, I just want to do stuff like that. Like, yeah. you know, not have to worry about grinding a specific skill. You know, I've got to mm. level up fishing, which I love fishing in MMOs, but like <laughs> you just pick a gun, you grab a, go buy a gun at, you know, a play, whatever that store is at a uh, area 18, right outside yeah. the Habs. Yeah. Get in your ship, go accept a mission, meet up with your friends and just go do it. Yeah. And, it and you can create your own fun. And that's what, again, not to just continually mention the org nights, but that's where the spirit of those are. Yeah. So. It's an entirely different game on org nights. Um, and this is not a podcast to like promote soul provision. Like that's, no. I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to come across that way. Any org, any org yeah. jump town with 15 people is an entirely different game. It's an entirely mm -hmm. different game. Um, I mean the last jump town having like, remember we got swarmed by like two or three enemy like our strangers and like just seeing all of the quick reaction force and like the secondary and tertiary efforts yes. we, like just rise up and then go into this aerial combat and like after they're done like oh okay is everything fine and then like we went back down and like all right continue mission let's, let's yeah, yeah. Can, and meanwhile those of us in the jump down bunker were just still moving boxes i hope you guys got but, it up there because we sure don't yeah, um, yeah and it was it was like a moment from the two towers when aragorn's like legolas bring him down and the urukai's running with the torch to yeah. blow up helm's deep um, that's right as groza was shooting bombs that are dropping <laughs> from this a2 yeah like that was incredible so um, good. And, and yeah it's those moments like you can't everybody is looking for those experiences especially when it comes to games because games video games have always existed as a way to um check out from your real world and yes. and originally i think there was a lot of hate towards that because you know 
kids that wanted to play video games all the time, parents back in the day would be like, oh, you're just wasting your time, you know, all this. And nowadays, you know, fast forward 30 years, we are so well connected across, you know, like you and I've never met in person. Many of the people I game with, I've never met in person. Yeah. But I don't have to. A wise man once said, um, <laughs> and the unwise man, me, is going to butcher this delivery. <laughs> but it's something along the lines of you stop, be not stop becoming friends, but you stop being friends when you stop making memories together. Mm. And you're able to make these memories day in and day out. I mean, currently it's every Thursday at org night. Um, maybe listener your org night is on Sunday night. So every Sunday night you're making those memories with those people. And mm -hmm. ultimately that's why this game is successful. And that's why MMOs as historically, you know, a genre have always been successful because their goal is to give you an opportunity to engage with other people that you normally wouldn't get to engage with. Yeah. And do something. So that's right. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's highlighted in like the bar citizens. First off, if you haven't ever been to one, I encourage any listener or viewer to go to their closest bar citizen. It's an amazing experience. And go and talk to people. Don't just be there and exist. Talk to people. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's weird. It's weird to see people there that never say a word and then an hour later they leave. But um talk, talk and like enjoy because those moments that Conf is mentioning, um, man, that is like the ultimate bar conversation. Remember that one time we were in Jump Town and oh you know, it is. <laughs> uh girls us falling down a, a hillside and we end up doing like a cutty red to like pick his ass up off the side of the mountain. Um not even jump town related but at jump town like what the hell like these are the stories <laughs> that make great drinking stories and so a bar citizen is a phenomenal you know location to go do that but it's just and, and, and don't even get me started about actual citizen con like going to last year's citizen con in la there are people you know i've never met before came up to me because of the podcast or because of soul provision shook my hand it was uh, that in and of itself is a blessing but going through those stories and that community and culture like that's what this game is bringing and, and again i haven't yeah. felt it in any other game so Let's uh, let's move on to Mustang Six's specific questions. Um, here we go. In the past year of Beyond the Verse and running the Soul Provision Org, what stands out for you as the most unanticipated occurrence? In the past year of Beyond the Verse and running the Soul Provision Org, what stands out for you as the most unanticipated occurrence? Hmm. So. <laughs> Wow, there's so <laughs> there's so many of them. Um, again, when you when you set out on a humble endeavor to just play with friends, anything is unanticipated. The fact that we're at a hundred members is unanticipated. <laughs> that was what I was gonna say for you. Is perhaps the state of the Soul Provision Org as it is at this moment is an unanticipated thing. Yeah. I mean, you set out to create a podcast and you had created this org, you know, before that podcast launched. That's right. But yeah. um I don't could you say that you anticipated to be at this point? Maybe not like in a year but ever, like was mm -hmm. that your it wasn't your goal, so it was like something that you're like Yeah, here we are. I yeah, full transparency. I created Soul Provision. You and I were the first two members. <laughs> um, I, I created Soul Provision to to basically have enough people to run a ship. Yeah, like I don't know, eight people, <laughs> ten yeah. people. Hey, it'd be really fun to operate a whole a whole C or a whole E. Um, it'd be really you know, <laughs> that'd be a lot of fun. Fast forward to we have officers. Right, we have subject matter experts. We have content creators that are producing videos. You're producing videos, and I heard you do like a voiceover and like a song for somebody. Like just crazy, crazy, like in a good way, crazy, um, you know, growth and soul provision. So, I think the Beyond the Verse podcast thing, um, nothing was really unanticipated, and that's not. I'm, I'm going to sound cocky. Um, I'm going to sound cocky, but like I know because of my work ethic from Amazon, the military, 
my obsession over quality and production. Like I know it's going to be something worthwhile and like worth listening to. I didn't expect it to be 18,000 listens. That's yeah. uh, that was unanticipated, but I knew it was going to be successful, whatever that meant. But the soul provision org that um, was probably the most unanticipated. It's just the growth of where we're at. Like I said, two officers over a hundred members. Um, we have a, we have a, um, a, poll or like a best in show campaign going on right now where we're we're voting on you know ships to be uh, put up against each other kind of like again the best in show but our own version of doing it we've, we've got that running um it's it's just it's just in, it's just incredible like it's just incredible um from that perspective and then mustang asks a second question okay. given your amazing prediction hit rate thank you <laughs> thank you so much for prompting that piece um <laughs> given your amazing prediction hit rate what is your prediction for chris roberts making a live streaming tv show or a movie for the star citizen verse in the next three to five years i love this question <laughs> uh okay so i will brag i will take a couple right. of seconds and con if you tell me to shut up if it goes too far <laughs> I, I, do. I have been right almost at every turn um, and that's some of it's dumb luck, but the other the other bit of it is because I obsess over the monthly reports and the developer you know notes. What? Okay, I was just say you you, you do pay a, a lot of attention to the details. Uh, I do, and that's helpful. And really, that's another part of why Beyond the Verse is helpful is that you do that so i don't have to yeah <laughs> and i thank you for that but yeah. but he's asking about a show or a like a live a, like so, <laughs> the, I, the casual in me is like well, d shouldn't he just finish this game first yeah no <laughs> no <know>? I, <laughs> I don't know 100 percent. that would be my answer but yeah what's yeah. what's your prediction i suppose yeah Mr. 100 100 percent well it's, it's, i was getting there i, I, I want to ride i want to ride this wave for a couple of <laughs> seconds you told me to um, not let you do that for very yeah. long so i'll be fast then i'll be fast okay all right pyro to be playable before the end of last year it was it wasn't released, but it was playable. It was a, it was in the tech preview channel, so it was playable right there. That has an asterisk next to that. It it does prediction. like a Barry Bonds home run record. I get it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but it's still playable technicality. Um, uh, Squadron Forty Two. Um, I it, it was going to be you know this year. There's a lot of indicators saying that it will be, but whatever. We'll put that aside. F eight C called that out. Three twenty three called that out. Or three twenty two. Sorry, patch three twenty two called it out. Um, the Idris event. I am gonna I'm gonna say a half a half truth there or half right there. Um, it wasn't Xeno threat, but it was the flyable event. I knew we were gonna have the Idris in the verse. Um, a couple weeks ago so I, I just listen to the show because you might get some really good <laughs> nuggets to take home with you but as far as the rest of his question about a tv show i am a million percent aligned with conif and that was my that was my answer is i mustang i love you but in this one <laughs> moment i hate you for even bringing this up yeah, he's got he's got to <laughs> tarnish his potential flawless yeah. <laughs> record here yeah. by by weighing it yeah let's uh let's get 4.0 out first i don't know or maybe uh squadron 42 or or i don't know server meshing or distribution centers i don't know one of the 100 items that are on the list uh before we talk about a tv show <laughs> personally I mean, it, it could happen so i think what i think what would be more likely is so funny. a tv show would get green lit if squadron 42 is a massive success because oh, that's I where agree. you're getting a lot of those characters yeah. uh and there's been some pretty high profile celebrities like mark hamill that are yes characters in squadron 42 and so yeah. once we see that game then i could be you know i could see there being some sort of spin-off but uh yeah i don't know I, I could see it being a Netflix, a Netflix special, you know, like a ten, a ten show, you know, season or something like that. I just, I don't, I don't even want to, like, don't get Chris sidetracked. Don't do it. <laughs> he's, I feel like he's like the ADD kid in the room. It's like ah, squirrel. Keep yeah. him focused. 
Keep them focused. So is your prediction no then for the three to five years? No, whatever you said. Hundred percent. I, I don't think okay. it I don't think it happens in the next three years. Um I think Squadron Forty Okay, here we go. I think Squadron <laughs> I think Squadron Forty Two is uh, gonna be announced and the theme for this year's Citizen Con. I think it releases in 2025 so next year i think it actually releases that'll be a year of like really good work and they're still working on episodes two and episodes three as expansions but those will happen very quickly once this tech is is finalized and then we're going to go to star citizen 1.0 like the live star citizen that in and of itself is the next three to five years i don't think that there will be enough runway to also produce a tv show in my personal opinion that's fair. There you go. All of that is just based off of gut feeling. <laughs> I have no insider information. Um, but let's do this. Let's get into the last. Actually, no, I want to ask you a question. Speaking okay. of um, kind of like how we see the success of Squadron 42, I am curious of your thoughts on whether or not Squadron 42 should go console. Uh, oh. Not to like I s- think side no. I, I can I can handle this. I'm a I'm a big boy <laughs> podcaster, allegedly. I think my answer for that is always going to be yes from the perspective of cast the widest net to get the mm. most people into it. Yeah. Um if you would have asked, if this question were to be asked before the current gen, which is PlayStation Five and Xbox Series X. I would have said no way because no. we're looking at 10 year old consoles. Yeah. But if, if uh, star citizen or squadron 42, as you're saying releases in 2025, I think these consoles could handle it. Uh, but I think you'll probably see a lot of 30 FPS um, discussion mm-hmm. about the games getting locked on console at 30 FPS. Yeah. Uh, whatever. That. So, in general, I think yes, because you do want, if you release a game, I mean, look at it this way. The the games that have won Game of the Year in the last two years was, you know, Baldur's Gate 3 and uh, Elden Ring. And then before Mm -hmm. that was It Takes Two. It's been, I guess, sometime before that, it was a PlayStation-only game. But the last three years have been a game that is available on basically every console. Now, Switch yeah. is a little <laughs> different. Um, but Elden Ring, available for the two consoles plus PC. Yeah. Baldur's Gate 3 was at launch, available for PC and PS5. And then by the end of the year, they, you know, Larian committed to releasing it on Xbox, and they did. Yeah. And you want those experiences especially if they are big experiences and these big things to be playable by as many people as possible i think yeah um i don't know if at the start when it first launches if it would be console but yeah i would love to see it be console at some point yeah yeah and i agree with you i i think it's the gateway i'll say it mostly adults on this uh on this podcast (laughs) it's the gateway drug and to star citizen so i think i think the more people you get that kind of dabble in the pc world but they're primarily on on playstation yeah get them hooked on squadron 42 make them ask that question or make them make them make that statement i really wish i could do this with friends well you can it's called Star Citizen. It's over on PC. Yes, it's the reverse of um, of what Red Dead Two and GTA Five did, right? Mm. Didn't they release their single player experience and then the multiplayer experience came? Yeah. Yep. Um, and there's a it's lot of people that look at Star Citizen and they'll say, you know what? I don't want to play that. Like the money that would go into it. A lot. Of, there's a lot of misconception about how much money you need to spend. Yeah. I've only ever spent like $170 of real money on ships. I just ride around in people that have spent a lot more of their ships. <laughs> yeah, um, you do. <laughs> but, but, but that's the... that's Again, we've already talked about that yes. at length. That's the point. Or that is the, the friendship piece. Yes. 
but there's a lot of people that don't want that that do want to dip their toes by experiencing okay but what is like the lore of star citizen yeah. i almost said starfield <laughs> um, what is the lore of star citizen who are the who are the players because and by players i mean like the characters the npcs that yeah. are the political you know yeah players of the realm that is where people a lot there are a lot of players that that want that before they ever consider well like i need to get my i need to really let the shower heat up before <laughs> i jump in yeah. and start in you know with the multiplayer aspect because it's going to be a very different experience i think 100 percent. yeah so. I agree. And, and and just kind of a quick, I guess, uh, a final note transitioning to Grizz's email. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how they're going to put the, the, the key binding on, on a controller. Like there's a million freaking key combinations. But maybe not so like, much how? in Squadron 42 though. That's right? fair. Yeah, that's fair. Maybe you don't have to do as much. Yeah. I mean, if you've ever looked in Star Citizen's key binding menu and you look at the controller settings, because I, I use a controller to fly. Really? Uh, mouse and keyboard for all the FPS oh, stuff. Oh, cool. Okay. Which, which, as of now, is 90% of it, because I just ride in people's ships again. <laughs> um, but uh, but the contro- each button is like four different tiers deep of different, and it's wild. And I, <laughs> I have to have those key bindings up half the time to even <laughs> understand what I'm doing. But. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I use I use stick, and I have, that, I have the same thing. I have like a mapping I have like a, uh, a, a, a JPEG of like the mapping of my sticks. Cause I don't remember how to land or, you know, where do you put it? Solus on your single monitor. I alt tab. <laughs> that's oh what I do. God. That's what I do. Conniff. Oh. Jackass. <laughs> For those of Not you even on your phone. No, I thought we talked about this already on the show or is this I, new information th- for our, th- listeners? this might be new. This might be new for okay. the list. So, Hey listeners really quick. He's got a big confession to make. I, I guess. I mean, your intervention. I, I guess. Tell you. So I work for a Fortune 500 company, <laughs> Amazon, right? And so you would think that, uh, you know, somebody who goes to work and has four monitors and like, this is how I live and breathe. I have one monitor for my Excel spreadsheet, one for Data Central and all this nonsense. You would <laughs> think that I would take that like best practice and use it for my content creation slash gaming. No, I don't. I have one single 27 inch monitor that I do everything off of. You know what? Yeah. More power to you and all tab ninja. (laughs) That's why we hit the ground with the carrot. Probably. No doubt. You're like, where's the button for the lowering the (laughs) throttle? Cause I need it like yesterday. Yes. It was. (sighs) Yes. But you wouldn't know nowadays. Like I don't know. Organites now are pretty. F- no, no, yes, yeah, you. It's pretty smooth. Really, <laughs> you got- have learned a lot in the flying realm. <laughs> All right, let's let's end. Let's end with an email from Groza, which I I actually appreciate. Um, the non Star Citizen questions. I, I think this is this is an amazing <laughs> amazing way of ending the show. But uh, Con, if these are yeah. questions for you as well, I think I sent these to you. Um, you did. Assuming it's the same four. It is. It is. So here Grizzle we go. Does wild things, so I wouldn't be surprised if. Yes, Grizzle does. Somehow he <laughs> switched them up. Uh, one of our officers in uh, in Silt Provision, which we might want to question keeping him there um, <laughs> <laughs> after after these questions. Let's go. Yep. I'm having a hard time coming up with Star Citizen focused questions for various reasons. What I'm curious about is this, and I'm going to couch all of these questions not as a quote what or who is your favorite end quote because quote favorite end quote is a silly concept in word. Tracking. All right, number one. <laughs> number one. Tell me about a scene from Lord of the Rings, the film trilogy, that you could watch once per month and still love, and what about it speaks to you? These are great, like, icebreaker questions. Yeah, maybe we should have started with these. <laughs> you know, I, well, I, I say this it's for last. Yeah, because it's like, I would say lightning round, but these probably generate quite the conversation um yeah. is there a scene that 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 comes out to you that speaks well, to you the problem is so one i've been re as i mentioned i, I think right. it's been a very long episode <laughs> uh <laughs> i've been reading fellowship of the ring and yes. so i i was sick in february 
Uh, just mm. the usual winter to spring flu that everyone gets. Oh, yeah. And I watched all of the Fellowship of the Ring, yeah. which I've seen it before. I've read the books before. But all Fellowship of the Ring, Two Towers. And then also the 79, 1979 animated Lord of the Rings. And I was reading Fellowship of the Ring at the same time. So I'm very <laughs> keyed in on this. And we can yeah. do another. We still have... 48 hours to go <laughs> um so just lord of the rings i'll just get my book and we'll read it yeah the That's problem it. is that so much of like lord of the rings now has been turned into like memes mm. and not because it's 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 excellent but like the, yeah. the movie's been around so long that like there's memes for everything like you one does not simply walk into mordor or frodo <laughs> saying all right keep your secrets to gandalf or whatever it is at the beginning of fellowship yeah and so there's no like scene that I would say I always come back to. Certainly not once a month. Yeah. But I will say I like the quotes from the movie. Like mm. like when uh, Pippin at the Prancing Pony is like, "It comes in pints. I'm getting one." And then he goes off and gets it. Like I'll say that to <laughs> random things. Like if someone yeah. gets something, nice. or when Gimli's like, "Salted pork." You know, like just yeah. it's little things like that. Like there's no specific scene. Mm, um, maybe the Aragorn telling the hobbits that they bow to no one at the oh, end of Return good. of the King. Yeah, that one would probably be the one that I'm like. That's good. Or when Pippin sings um, that song as Faramir and yes. the other Gondorians yeah. ride to their deaths. Yeah, yeah. And Denethor's eating. Oh, that, that, that steak or chicken or whatever it is. I just watched that one today Ugh. at work. So there's your That's answer, Groza. <laughs> <laughs> That's a killer one. Yeah. Yeah, that, that song, song's beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that gets me every time. For me, there's two answers. Um, kind of the one, um, maybe like less emotional one, but in, in Fellowship of the Rings, man, you're a lot more versed in this than I am, so I'm going to butcher most of the details. Just recently. It yeah. all <laughs> escaped my memory in about two months Yeah, I finished the book. So Fellowship of the Rings, when they're all like they're all together for the first time trying to decide to go on this mission or not. Um, oh, the Council of Elrond. The Count, yes. Okay. Yeah, that, count, that whole scene is very... Uh, powerful for me because it's like I don't know um, when you when you have like a a, a military background um, like nothing nothing looks good <laughs> like like you're going to yes. deploy you're going to serve your country or whatever quote unquote nothing looks good it looks damned it looks like it's going to suck for the next year you kind of in that mindset but you know you got buddies that are going to go with you you're not by yourself yeah. you have your team and so in that moment it's like i've read i read the books before i saw the movies so like i mm -hmm. knew what was going to happen in the next three movies or the next yeah. two movies and that conversation of like we're going to go regardless who's with me that whole concept um, was extremely powerful, but not as powerful. And this is where I'm going to rely on you for details. Okay. But in the second movie, when uh, Gandalf says, you know, look towards the east and on the third day, um, you know, I'll be there or whatever, right. whatever that whole like, you know, synopsis is. Yeah. But like they're in, like, they're in these dire conditions. They're all dying. The, the walls have been breached. Like, you know, they're about to get wiped out completely. And then all of a sudden you see the bright light coming out of the East and it's Gandalf with like all of the, um, here. the riders of Rohan. Yeah. Riders of Rohan. Yeah. So like, I think that moment like was, it gets me every time. Cause it's like, they were hugging their last hug. They were kissing their last, you know, kisses. Yes. And uh, I will add to that because very powerful. And I, I, for whatever reason, you can go talk to your buddies at Amazon. The movies are now no longer on Prime for some <laughs> reason, unless I rent them. They were free when I was sick and now they're not. Um, Classic So Amazon. I watched The Two Towers the most recently. And mm -hmm. as an adult with kids, that's where your yeah. mind shifts. Like uh, the last time so I true. really watched these would have been in college or before. Yeah. And it's a powerful scene, but you're just kind of like, eh, whatever. But then when you have kids Ugh. in real life, <laughs> can you have fake kids, I guess? Maybe Star <laughs> Citizen, maybe that'll be a thing. Um, like your mentality shifts and the dire yes. nature of, of what Aragorn is doing, especially the scene before, well, before Helm's Deep when 
Legolas, Legolas. Legolas says in Elvish, all these men are going to die. And Aragorn responds in English, then I shall die as one of them. Yeah. Is extremely powerful. Yeah. And then to see the elves come and um, Haldi or whatever his name is. Yeah. And, and you can just tell, like, these people know the odds of surviving this are low. Yeah. And yet they still do it. Yeah. And so, yes, yeah, seeing Gandalf mm. pop up with Aemir and the Riders of Rohan as they then charge down that hill mm -hmm. is like, it's crazy. I mean, it's like their savior moment, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's insane. It's incredible. It's insane, which is really reminiscent in the third movie when Aragon shows up with the, I'm going to call it the Army of the Dead. Is that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Army of the Dead. I don't Whoever know. they're called. <laughs> But yeah, 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 they come and they wipe out like you know the same concept, but that like, mm -hmm. anyways. Moving on to number two, we're never gonna get through this. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> um, <for sure. laughs> question number two: Talk about three musicians or bands that you have been jamming to, or who have really spoken to you lately. Also, bonus question: Do you play any instruments? Well, I think that's a shoe-in question for you, Conniff. <laughs> Do you play any yes. instruments, Conniff? Yes, I do. Hey. Um, stick around to the end of the episode. I might have a surprise for Solus and you. Oh, snap. Um, I play oh, saxophone, snap. guitar, sing, bass. I can play piano, and I could pretend to play drums. Um, Damn. I think that's it. Damn. I mean, it's <laughs> once you learn theory... Yeah. And piano is very like I don't I when I say I play piano I do the triad chords and sure. sing with it and that's it and that's enough to entertain kids and that's all I need. Yep. Um, Done. Bass is you know my main instrument was guitar and saxophone saxophone all growing up guitar as an adult. Yeah. Uh, and with guitar like you could play bass you know you maybe bass players out there will feel offended by that but <laughs> i can't play bass like you play bass but i can i can play bass sure um and drums is a rhythm thing but yeah. uh you know like a basic rock beat i could do that sure as far as musicians i've been jamming to like i'm so all over the board <laughs> i listened to i see fire by ed sheeran today okay uh, there's this actually i'll give you this answer um, because the alternative is K-pop, because that's what my my kids <laughs> like listening to, and that's what gets played in the car. Um, yep. But there's this YouTuber or really TikToker named Gareth or Garth. Um, he is from Ireland, and he has one of he just does like covers. He's done Iris by the Goo Goo Dolls. I oh, think? cool. Yeah. Um, he just did Cole, which is some by some country artist very good song sure. but his voice is incredible and he just does acoustic and and sings and so that's that's probably my off the wall answer is garth yeah. or gareth i'd have to look it up love it yeah it's awesome what about you yeah i introduced you to soul provision as like a professional voice actor and musician so <laughs> what's you professional know. like what does that mean <laughs> <laughs> you, you you've been paid for it at least once i have so at least once yes professional <laughs> that's for sure <laughs> at least in the musician front voiceover yeah i've done that of a time yeah. or two but musician yeah i've been paid yeah once or twice I, i've seen pictures of you on stage performing i, I, yeah. I would say that's pretty damn professional i don't know that i ever saw them paid, but someone <laughs> someone in the band so did. someone got paid damn it <laughs> yeah um <laughs> Yeah, so so I think um, I don't know if I could name three. So besides like Bluey, you said K-pop, but like Bluey, The Wish, Disney soundtrack, does, like does Bluey Bluey does have music. They da, do. Da, 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 That's da, it. Da, da. That's copyright too. My, my darn it. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Uh, <laughs> no, it's uh, almost every time we go and I drop my kids off at daycare, they want to listen to either like The Wish soundtrack that and the movie by Disney, um, yeah. or they want to listen to like Bluey or these random uh, the Pokemon theme song, right? So like. Yeah. I don't know if I can answer this question like <laughs> seriously, seriously, <laughs> but well, and you're probably in meetings a lot too. Oh, and I'm, yeah. I'm in the same capacity. Like I don't listen to music a lot at work. I just mm. don't have the opportunity to. Uh, right. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. Um, so if I'm like in transit, I'm listening, you know, to podcasts more than likely, but I will, <laughs> I will say this. Um, if you haven't heard of the band called star set, Star okay. Set, they call themselves Cinematic Rock. 
That's like their genre. And no other band sounds like them. Um, but okay. it's cinematic rock. It like literally sounds like rock music you would hear in Star Citizen. So they throw in um, uh, almost like an EDM. They throw in like... Um, interesting sound effects they'll they'll throw on like nasa recordings in the background okay. so it's just it's a very interesting listen i think it's like intellectually stimulating uh, but it's also <laughs> like it's also rock so it you know you can jam yeah. out to it but i would i recommend star set it's a phenomenal band i've kind of really been digging but it's one of those that you get the record yes i just dated myself but you get the record and you sit down and you listen to the entire record from front to back because it's all seamless. Like one song blends into oh, the next yeah. song like and a like concept album. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> so I highly recommend that. And then instruments. So I grew up playing the trumpet. Ah, yes. Yep. Yeah, so I played the trumpet. You look like a trumpet player, frankly. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> I was a saxophone player. So you're like the same coin different sides as far as yep. band goes the saxophone was like the brass instrument of the wood in, exactly. <laughs> of, of the woodwind so <laughs> um yeah so i grew up playing the trumpet played the piano and i played the drums so there you go um number three this this is really funny what sort of role would i shine in at amazon <laughs> I'm assuming he's asking you for himself, right? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Um, I don't know. <laughs> so, so Groza, uh, I'm not going to like um, dox, dox Groza or anything, but in their, in their real life, um, they're, they're related to law. They, their career is in the law field. And so I, whenever I talk to Groza, I would see, I would see them shine like in loss prevention. And that loss prevention as in like, hey, you stole the item from the store. Loss prevention is also brand, um, like brand awareness, brand ambassadorship, um, the legality behind like brick and mortar okay. execution, etc. So I would probably see him, um, I'd probably see Grows a Shine in loss prevention. Yeah. If no one else knows what that means, but <laughs> to no. answer his question directly, but there you I go. Like there you go. I cannot answer that question. So. <laughs> yeah, what do you think? <laughs> what do you think, Conniff? Kind of? I would say brand ambassador. He could be a character in a uh, advertisement <laughs> run. I could see that. I could see that. And last but not least, and we have like two minutes to stay within two hours, or we could go the whole fifty. Uh, <laughs> oh, in the whole fifty. No. <laughs> what is the most hilarious random player involved interaction that you've had in Star Citizen in the past twelve months? Kind of. I'd like for you to go first on this one. What is the most hilarious random player involved interaction that you've had in Star Citizen in the past twelve months? I mean, it have to be from the org night because yes. I don't think I played. The previous time I played would have been beyond 12 months. I would actually say the night we did the arena commander gunfight plus the tank um, battle royale or whatever. It was oh, called. Yeah, yeah. So the gunfighting was fun. Yeah. But uh, Shoe Swapper joined us for that. Mm -hmm. And just the crew that was there like it was it was pretty wild yeah just playing around and i guess that's not really a it's kind of cheating because it's not interacting with random people it was it was org night people but yeah i was that was yeah the most fun wild thing i think <laughs> I, th I think i think for me um the most hilarious random so again to your to your sentiment i wouldn't call this random but there was an org night and this has to do with groza 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 is the other character in the story so of course he is it's our first jump town and i have pulled reconnaissance with my eclipse i'm up on the ridge line i'm observing right calling in calling in direction yeah. distance all that crap and uh, I make the comment, I'm like, man, I should have brought, you know, crews. I should have brought drinks or something because I'm down to like 35%, you know, health. Mm -hmm. And like a minute later, I see this tiny little like rock, like ROC. Uh, I see a tiny rock like climbing up the hillside. I'm like, who is driving up to my location in a small vehicle with their lights on, like <laughs> giving away my location in my eclipse where I'm supposed to be stealthy. I'm like, what's happening here? <laughs> Groza has chosen to leave his post, 
<laughs> to, hmm. to leave their responsibility, what they were doing, get into a ground vehicle, drive their happy ass up to my eclipse with like 10 cruises so that I could hydrate. <laughs> It's like, hmm, so, <laughs> Grosa, you abandoned your post, but, but I have to thank you. But, but thanks for not letting me die. <laughs> thanks. Uh, it, it, was hilar- it was hilarious for me because of the sequence of events. It was just like, hey, you know, I, I should have brought, you know, some, some liquid. Let's add it to our SOP. Let's add it to our packaging uh, list. Next thing I know, this little small white dot is coming towards me. I'm freaking out because <laughs> I'm, I'm in eclipse. Like, yeah. should I just go torp him? Like, like <laughs> what's happening with this one dude? It was a really ask questions later. <laughs> the sole provision way. Um, so yeah, it, it, but it also like it also led into uh, like the future, the future of RP, the future of of kind of of gameplay. Like mm-hmm. that happens in real life. You have refitting and resupply missions. You know, with troops that yep. are down the line. Um, you know, you're gonna need that. Who's to say that you don't? So, um, I thought that was a. It was a hilarious moment. It was a kind of a foretelling oh, yeah. moment, but uh, man, and with that, Con F two minutes over our time. No, nope. that's it. I have one last thing. Oh boy! And this is a special thing to okay commemorate. Oh boy! The the year. <laughs> I need to unhook this first. Yeah. I took the song "Free Falling." Okay. Probably by Tom Petty, but uh, John Mayer's version's better. Okay. I will fight anyone on that. Oh, you brought that And guitar I rewrote out. it, and it's called Free Flying. Oh, no. It's Let's about go. about our adventures in Star Citizen. Um, and you yeah. can place yourself here as the character that is being sung about. But I'm going to sing and play this, and that is going to be all she wrote, I think. Let's hope this is in tune because the temperature shift in this room has. Let's do it. Can you hear that? Oh, yeah. I'm going to adjust the mic so it's a little little better, but... I love All it. All right. Here we go. Let's do it. I don't have a multi-mic set up because uh, this is off the cuff, but this is free <laughs> flying about soul provision and the adventures therein. So... Oh, wait. No, it starts. I'm going to do this, too. The classic musician thing. Remove the headphone from one ear. He's a good boy, loves his mama, loves spaceships, and Orison too. (laughs) He's a good boy, crazy about flying, loves dog fights, and bounty hunting too. And it's a long flight from Pyro to Stanton. There's some pirates, but they're not that smart. And he's a bad boy, cause he won't even miss them. He's a bad boy for stabbing their hearts. And he's free, free flying. His org mates are loading them boxes, gonna <laughs> cash in for some serious UEC. And he takes off a dozen plan to dust him. <laughs> he found his crewmates, his spacers for life, and he's free, free flying, flying. Now he's free flying. He's 
gonna fly out over New Babbage. He's gonna <laughs> write his, his name in the stars. He's gonna free fly out away from Atmo. He's gonna leave this, this world for a while. And he's free. So there you go. Holy <laughs> man. <laughs> Damn. That's that's a 10 o'clock at night performance if I ever heard one. Dude, that's solid. Whatever, yeah. Whatever the mystery of the time changes <laughs> in your neck of the woods, listener. Yeah. Uh, dude, that's phenomenal, man. Yeah. Thank I, you. Again, delivering what, what I, I, I know you can do. <laughs> Badass, <Sometimes>. man. <laughs> Badass. Well, damn! What? What? I'm just glad I didn't sing "Free Falling" that whole time because let me tell you, that's that's burned in here. So yeah, <laughs> do a little bit of yeah, editing, you know, throughout the show. That, oh yeah, that's to celebrate, you know, a hun- yeah, hundred awesome. years, <laughs> one year of Beyond the Verse, um, and of course, there's many more. And and again, I, as you mentioned earlier, it's it's not just Beyond the Verse. Yeah. Beyond the Verse is the podcast. Soul provision is arguably where the magic is happening and 100%. i think that's important to call out so yeah man 100 percent. and like i said at the beginning of this podcast and even during episode one it's a blessing to have you friend i i mm-hmm. i do we go back several years now at this point and it's been nothing but an honor um you know to do these two episodes with you we'll do it again sometime very soon yeah. so really episode do appreciate 100 it. yeah let's let's not wait that long that's another 50 episodes no no i don't know what i i don't know if i could top that for episode 100 <laughs> yeah, you better have a whole band next time oh, you know goodness. let's do it um i wouldn't be doing my due to di- my due diligence if i didn't pass the buck over to you um if people want more and they will they're gonna want more of conif they're gonna want more of questing <laughs> around the multiverse um how do we get more of conif where do we find you the easiest place is YouTube, simply at Conif. Um, I, I put out a video, like, it was last year. Uh, why I left ESO for Guild Wars 2 that blew up, and it was not my intention to do that. I put it out there for 50 people, so yeah. you'll see Conif. It's the same picture as my Discord um, handle, yeah, avatar, whatever. Uh, but the questing the multiverse is on should be on all podcast listening apps so Spotify, um, Apple, Google, you name it. It should be there, and that's just questing the multiverse. And again, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, that is my dear friend Shiloh and I's uh, journey through all sorts of different IPs and uh, whatever the, whatever nerddom you can fathom. <laughs> you know, we we do like book reports yeah. we've taught we actually do have uh, one a monthly episode uh, dedicated to board games we have another friend that we bring on and we do an entire board game centric episode as well so awesome uh, but that's questing the multiverse i do put all yeah. those episodes on my youtube so if you're not an audio only type person you can find those there as yeah. well phenomenal brother phenomenal well, for everybody else, uh, thank you for joining in, whether on YouTube, on the video replay, or here on the podcast. Uh, it's been a blessing. Thank you for 50 very memorable episodes and a full year of a phenomenal, phenomenal storyline. So thank you all so much. I hope this finds everybody well. Safe travels as you traverse beyond the verse. Take care, everybody.